Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing the concepts of hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Now, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our account because your support really means a lot to us and it really helps us keep these videos free and uh, it helps us create this content for your medical education. So with that being said, let's dive right in by first discussing cellular adaptations. The thing you got to remember about your cells is that your cells are constantly under a lot of stress, mainly because of the environment that they are in. One example of this would be your stomach lining. Your stomach lining is in a very toxic environment. That environment is very acidic. And because it is very acidic, your stomach lining is able to or is uh, at risk of erosion, right? Just because of that acidic environment. But our stomach lining has developed cellular adaptations in order to prevent this from happening. Because if we hadn't, we would eat through our own stomach lining and our gastric contents and juices would be in our abdominal cavity and it would lead to, you know, infections and sepsis and death, which obviously doesn't happen. Now, the thing is, even though our cells are being stressed out and put in stressful environments, our organs are generally in a state of homeostasis. And that is because at the microscopic level, if there are some insults happening, that is okay. At the macroscopic levels, the organs cannot stop functioning, otherwise we would die. So the changes that occur to the cellular adaptations or the changes that happen to our body at both the cellular and at the organ level are based off of the type and the severity of the stress. Both the type and severity actually play a role, but either way, regardless of what type or severity of stress there is, once you stress out part of your body or once you put stress on an organ, that organ is going to grow. So an increase in stress is going to lead to a growth of an organ. And let's just write that one more time. So stress will lead to increased size. Okay, one way or another. And there are mainly two types of growth adaptations you need to be well versed in and well aware of, and those are hypertrophy and hyperplasia. So we're gonna now talk about hypertrophy, then talk about hyperplasia, and then uh, do a quick wrap up and we should be done. So hypertrophy is a type of growth adaptation that occurs when you increase the size of the cell. That is very important because hypertrophy has to do with size, okay? The reason why I'm saying this is because we're gonna uh, differentiate hypertrophy from hyperplasia in a little bit. So let's say you have this cell. And if this cell goes through hypertrophy, it is going to grow into a, it's actually gonna grow in size. Now the issue is when you grow in size, you also need to fill up this space. The reason why you're growing in size is because there's some sort of stress that is causing this cell to grow. And once you cause it to grow, it's gonna use the rest of its space to be able to accommodate the stress that it's under so that it can continue to function and that the organelle, or the organ, excuse me, can continue to do whatever function it needs to do. The issue is when you grow in size, the original contents might only take up just a small portion of the cell, right? So let's say this is the original size, the, the, the previous size. Well, all of the rest of the space right here and here is going to be wasted. Obviously our bodies are really efficient so that doesn't happen. The reason why is because we are able to fill in this space by filling uh, a cell. You're not gonna have empty cytoplasm. What are you gonna have instead? Well, you are going to have proteins and organelles. So under hypertrophy, not only does the size increase, but also you have more protein synthesis. Let's write that down. Protein synthesis and you have increase in organelles. So you have organelle production as well. And you might be wondering, how does that happen? And this is a key defining factor for hypertrophy. Hypertrophy involves gene activation. And that's why I waited to tell you all this, because once you activate your genes, okay, you are going to increase in size by increasing your protein synthesis and by increasing the number of organelles you have. All right. So this is very important. The way hypertrophy functions is by increasing gene activation. When you increase gene activations, you are going to increase the protein synthesis and organelle production, leading to an increase in size, and thus you are going to undergo hypertrophy. Now, when it comes to hypertrophy, this is a pathway that only 
few organs and only few tissues in our body undergo. Majority of our body does not actually go through hypertrophy. And there's a reason why, which we'll talk about at the end of this lecture. But you got to remember that hypertrophy alone is a very rare process and it happens in very few and very specific tissues. So that's a brief overview of hypertrophy. Now let's compare that to hyperplasia. Hyperplasia and hypertrophy are similar, but hyperplasia is different in its own aspect. Case in point, hyperplasia, it's also a type of growth adaptation like hypertrophy. However, instead of increasing the size of the cell, it's going to increase the number of cells. So if you had a cell that was looking like this, essentially it will go into uh, hyperplasia and you will have multiple of the same type of cell, okay, instead of having one big cell. Now the way this works, and let's write this here, right, you have increase in number. So the way this works is essentially um, through a very simple mechanism. You got to go back to your basic knowledge of medicine and the human body. What's going to cause more cells to be made? Stem cells. Hyperplasia involves the production of new stem cells. So you essentially, you are now activating the stem cells to produce more cells down the road. That is how hyperplasia functions. And we're going to write that down. In my opinion, hyperplasia is definitely the easier of the two to remember just because uh, it's really simple and straightforward. Now, the production of new stem cells allows our body to create more tissue and is able to accommodate whatever stress it is under. The, the thing is, you have normal examples or uh, physiologic examples of hyperplasia and you have pathologic examples of hyperplasia. And this is something you need to understand really well because it can get very confusing really fast. So first off, let's talk about a normal example of hyperplasia. This example would be the uterine lining during a normal menstrual cycle. During a normal menstrual cycle, the uterine lining goes from uh, small, then it grows, and then it starts to plateau off, and then it falls, right? Essentially, that's what the uterus does uh, during the menstrual cycle. This growth aspect right here, when the cells actually grow, it uh, happens because of hyperplasia. You see, in the basal layer, there is there are stem cells and these stem cells actually push the other cells up and up and up and that's when you get the hyperplasia occurring in the endometrium okay so these are the stem cells so this example when the uterine lining pro proliferates during the menstrual cycle before a uh, woman undergoes menses is actually a normal example a physiologic example of hyperplasia this is normal now, what is a pathologic example? A pathologic example of hyperplasia is anything that should not be happening normally, right? Well, the difference or the issue is with pathologic hyperplasia, you can end up progressing to dysplasia and even cancer. And this is a very common uh, pathway of developing cancer. Pathologic hyperplasia is essentially a precancerous type lesion. One key uh, example of this would be endometrial hyperplasia. Endometrial hyperplasia usually occurs uh, after a woman finishes menopause. So when they're postmenopausal and they don't have the estrogen um, stimulating the endometrium lining to grow. When this happens without proper you know, estrogen or when you have unopposed estrogen and the endometrial lining grows, you end up getting endometrial hyperplasia. And this is a pathologic hyperplastic condition because if it is left untreated, if you do not treat endometrial hyperplasia, you will progress to endometrial carcinoma, aka endometrial cancer. And that is very dangerous and something you don't want to do. Now, of course, being medicine and being the human body and biology there, it wouldn't be fair for us to just have clear-cut rules. There are always exceptions to every rule. And when it comes to the pathologic hyperplasia pathway that can lead to dysplasia and cancer, there is a quintessential textbook uh, issue or a textbook example that does not fit this pathway and that is the exception of benign prosthetic hyperplasia aka bph you see in bph when men's prostate actually enlarges because of hyperplasia uh, a lot of people tend to think that it is going to progress on to prostate cancer and that is a normal uh, logical assumption to make, right? Because we're talking about how pathologic hyperplasia can lead to dysplasia and cancer. Well, if BPH is a pathologic hyperplasia, it only makes sense that it could progress to prostate cancer. 
Well, the thing is, BPH is not a precancerous lesion, and there's no link between BPH and prostate cancer. Why do I bring this up? Essentially, because this is a very easily tested point that a lot of people can miss if they don't understand that BPH is benign in and of itself, hence why it's called benign prostatic hyperplasia. Yes, it is a hyperplastic condition, it is pathologic, but it does not progress to cancer, thus we call it benign. Okay, so now that we've gone through hyperplasia and hypertrophy, there's one last thing you need to essentially understand, and that is a concept that hypertrophy and hyperplasia usually happen together in our body. Very rarely do our bodies go through just one pathway when they are put under a lot of stress. An example, a quintessential example of this combined uh, mechanism uh, when there is a lot of stress being placed on a body happens during pregnancy. During pregnancy, the uterine lining actually increases, right? So as you know, the uterus grows during the pregnancy as it accommodates the fetus and as the fetus grows. Well, it can only grow to a certain extent, right? I mean, if you have a uterus that is, let's say, you know, this size, and let's just put it right here, right? You, this is your uterus. Um, you can only grow the cells if you're going through hypertrophy so big, you know, like you can only increase it so much. Otherwise, the cells would burst. There is a limit. At the same time, you can only grow so many cells, right? So you can only do this. Well, the thing is, in a during the state of pregnancy, when the uterus is growing, both of these conditions, both of these pathways, hypertrophy and hyperplasia, are happening at the same time in order to accommodate the massive growth that happens in the human body. The uterus cells are going to increase in size and in number, essentially to accommodate the fetus. Okay, So they're not only going to go into this big, they're actually going to go and look something like this. Right, I'm just giving it to you so you can understand what it's gonna look like, okay? Hypothetically, not drawn to scale, of course. Okay, so when it comes to hypertrophy and hyperplasia, like we're saying, you know, these conditions happen together. Well, there are certain exceptions to this rule as well, and that is permanent tissue. Now, you gotta recall back to what I said earlier in this lecture about hypertrophy. In the hypertrophy slide, I said that there are very few organs that go through hypertrophy. And the reason why is because of the permanent tissue that is present. You see, when we're talking about hypertrophy, hypertrophy involves gene activation, right? And hyperplasia actually involves stem cells. Well, permanent tissues do not have any stem cells. Therefore, they cannot go through hyperplasia because they do not have any stem cells to create more cells. So the only pathway that functions for them that is essentially available when they're put under a lot of stress is the gene activation pathway, aka hypertrophy. That is the basis of why permanent tissue undergo hypertrophy and not hyperplasia. They just don't have stem cells. Hence why that happens. Now, there are three main types of permanent tissue you need to remember, and those are the your cardiac myocytes, your skeletal muscle, and your nerves. And the way I remember is a permanent tissue obviously cannot regenerate. And why can it not regenerate? Well, you guessed it. There are no stem cells. Okay? And it's pretty straightforward. That's it. Now, when we talk about hypertrophy in and of itself, one quintessential example would be uh, hypertrophic cardio, uh, um, cardiac hypertrophy, right? Uh, it's especially when we're talking about the heart in uh, it, during a hypertensive pathway. The heart is going to hypertrophy so it can actually pump out the blood. Okay, so cardiac hypertrophy is one quintessential example. When the heart grows in this size, when the, when the cardiac myocytes grow, they are going through hypertrophy and not hyperplasia because you're not getting more myocytes, you're just having larger myocytes. So let's talk about the differences really quickly. Hypertrophy involves increase in the size of the cell. And the way it happens is by increasing protein synthesis and increasing organelle production. Why would you need to increase both of these, production and, and uh, uh, protein synthesis? Essentially because you want to fill the space as you grow in size. And the way all this happens is by gene activation. Okay, your genes are activated 
and they are going to then increase synthesis and production and leading to the increase in size. And the one thing you want to remember for hypertrophy is this is highly related uh, by itself to permanent tissue because permanent tissues lack stem cells. All right, so hyperplasia that is then really simple. You can have an increase in the number of cells. Okay, and this happens because of stem cells. The stem cells are able to actually synthesize more cells and you get a larger organ. And this can happen in majority of tissue lines in our body. And this is mainly that's where it occurs. Majority of tissues. Now remember, like we said earlier, both of these pathways happen together, but this is the key differentiating factors, uh, key differentiating aspects that you can get tested on. And that's pretty much it for hypertrophy and hyperplasia. I hope you found this video educational and helpful. If you did, consider subscribing to our channel because your support really means a lot to us. If you like this content and you want to see more content like this, go to our website at www.madmedicine.org where you can find more educational content for your exam prep free of charge. Thank you.